Hi, this is Debbie Dashinger. Welcome to Dare to Dream. Love, love, love spending this time with you. And I just got to say, I'm like having a lot of love for my clients right now. I, I really appreciate that I attract really hungry people who whatever they do are bridging the very metaphysical world. That's the best word I can give it because it's much deeper than that. Energy, bioenergy, I don't know. But um, how blessed am I to attract clients like that because working with them is so much joy. Started working with this gal on her book. She does mortgage loans, but she's very metaphysical, like deeply so, and is putting out a very metaphysical book. And we're in the middle of talking. She's like, I want to do a podcast. Can you coach me on that? And I start coaching on her that. And she said, and when the book is done, will you take my book to bestseller? I'm like, girl, <laughs> you got me. I'm not going anywhere. You know, you wanted to do the gravy train with me and the, have the light really go on the full Monty, full visibility. I'm right here. Um, I'm your coach. I'm your mentor. And I, I adore her, adore her. And of course, the more we work together, things come up like Aya, that's all I'm going to say, and other things. And it's like a uh, lot of sync, a lot of sync, a lot of uh, paths that are similar and just deep appreciation. So thank you, universe, for bringing me always all the right people at the right time in the right way. And you too, as my beloved listener, thank you, thank you, because this show has been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards for a Webby Award. And please subscribe to the show. Tell your friends about the show. Tell your family. Say, hey, Dare to Dream is my favorite show. I check it out. I subscribe. I leave a review. You do it too. Send them a link. Send them a link to this episode. Dare to Dream is currently ranked number 97 in self-improvement on Apple Podcasts in the USA, number 32 in Portugal, number 67 in Canada, number 145 in France. And uh, I just got news today that we are in spirituality. Hmm, I should always write down the numbers because I don't remember, but it was a great number. Let's just call it 125 in the entire globe for spirituality. That's because of you. That's because of you. You're tuning in, you're subscribing, you're leaving reviews, you're telling your friends and family, I thank you, I thank you. So grateful to be doing this journey with you. I am indeed a certified coach and I help you to write a page turner book. I also have a company that takes your book to a guaranteed, fully done for you, international bestseller status. And I show you the ultimate visibility formula, how you can get booked and interviewed on radio and podcasts and get massive, awesome results. So I run a visibility hub. You can check me out at debbie-dashinger.com. That's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com for all your book and media exposure. I want to thank Dr. Dane here in Access Consciousness for being the sponsor of this show. They do amazing energy healing work out into the world. You can buy their books, their products. You can attend their classes worldwide, by the way. And also you can become an Access Consciousness facilitator. I love their classes and you will find more at Dr. Dane, D-A-I-N here, H-E-E-R.com, as well as accessconsciousness.com. My question to you today is, do you want to fix or change something in your life, be it health, be it wealth, be it harmony, be it peace, peace of mind, relationships? How about your profession? How about the government or sports and more? Hmm, that's lots of subjects because after spending 40 years exploring and studying consciousness and how it emerges into matter, my guest, David Adelson, founder of Peace and Harmony Company, invented a process to create from within the quantum unified field levels, and it has been a game changer. 700 programs later, David has shown how effortlessly even global change can be. He and his company have already developed simple, easy to use programs to do just what you're looking for. Change can be hard or it can be easy. His programs make change effortless. And to learn more, visit peaceandharmonyco.com. I welcome my guest, David Edelson, to the Dare to Dream show. It's great to have you, David. Thank you, Debbie. It's great to be here. I love you. I adore you. This is so exciting for me, as you know. So thank you for having me. Yeah, we're a mutual fan club. And so I just want to preface my question where I'm going to start by letting people know that as we are talking, David and I, I'm actually playing, I'm being very... Um, 
I'm really going for it here because I've got two of his programs playing in the background. You don't hear them. You don't need to hear them. If you are sensitive to energy, I'm telling you his programs have changed my life. You don't got to get it. I love that there's no like, I don't need to figure this out. That's your job, David. But I know the moment I started listening first to your peaceandharmonydownload.com and then I bought your Harmony Sphere and even have one for podcasters. This is the easy, simple stuff. You've got much grander, but it is playing in the background. So if you're feeling like yummy, part of it is because David's on the show and part of it is because we've got his energy playing on my end and also on his. So David, explain when we talk about the programs and global change and effortlessness, what is the work you do out in the world and what kind of label would you give yourself? Are you inventor? Are you Unifil guy CEO? <laughs> Explain all of what you do. I think inventor um, because uh, certainly not a marketer because um, I have 700 programs and every time I turn around, my son is very frustrated because I've created another one and he's still trying to do the marketing on one or whatever. Um, my whole thing is that I, you know, I'm, there's a lot of people and I'm sure there's a lot of people who are listening who may be aware that they're feel a little out of place at earth. There's a lot of people who came here from whatever other realm or dimension or plane or whatever you want to call it, who came here specifically to help at this time. Mm -hmm. And I'm one of those people. And, um, so, and I've known my whole life. I mean, some psychic person uh, predicted my birth to my grandmother and my mother independently, not knowing they were related. Um, I have had experiences of all kinds of things since I was young. And, um, and uh, so my whole role has been to take the energies from higher realms, specifically heaven, and to make them accessible here on earth. So we've been... I, I know some people like the term downloading, whatever the term is, but we've been taking them from where they are and making them available here. And we can call them quantum energies, we can call them unified field energies, we can call them heaven energies. And in my various marketing stages, I've probably done all of them. Um, but basically, it's this idea of recognizing the inner workings of the divine of nature, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, of the subtle energies and then making them available to people in the easiest, simplest ways. We all know how hard change is and we all know how busy people are. So what we set out to do was to make it absolutely effortless to take advantage of these programs. <clears throat> so they're as simple as as we're doing now, we're both playing silent programs. You just turn them on and you let them play. And as you have experienced, huge things start happening. But we also have tinctures, some drops that you can take, a couple drops for people who like that. They take that a few times a day. We have some superpower drops called Ascension Lines, which are really potent. Um, the tr one of them is called Trust of Saints. One of them is called ego less slash e ego slash ego less. One is um, self aware. These are really powerful ones that, um, again, you just take a few drops and it makes massive transformation. We have one called God's Gate, which is if you feel like you, you're doing okay, but nothing major is happening in your spiritual growth, you take God's Gate and it just blasts you. Oh my God. Forward. I'm like ready to place an order. <laughs> so, so we have ten, we have ten of those, and they're absolutely amazing. And then we have artwork that you just put up and you just glance at the same way you'd look at like a beautiful waterfall or a picture of a waterfall. And again, it makes changes. We have six second videos that you can just you put it and you just watch it six times in a row. Thirty six seconds is all it takes. And it starts making massive transformations in your consciousness and how you perceive the world. Okay, time out, time out, because I don't know if anyone's out there like me. I'm trying to write furiously. Let me go back to super tinctures because you got me there. Where are those available? Where does uh, peace and harmony download? I'm sorry, peace and harmony Oh, uh, and they're okay. called ascension line. Ascension line. Okay. Ascent, ascension. Yeah. Ascension. 
And then the, and we're going to get to the artwork a little later, but where is the artwork available? available? Everything, everything's on the same site. Okay, so just tootle around plus the six second video. All right, done. So this is amazing. I guess the question that comes up when I hear you describing this, what I'm hearing- I'm not, I'm not done, but go ahead. I know, but we'll, we'll deep dive into each of them. I want people to absorb uh, pieces of this at a time in like yummy, delicious. Go so for it. When you say, essentially, this is what I'm hearing you say, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you are tapping into the matrix of the one, the all that is the divine, and that you are finding a way to bring it here for us to access our true nature and be in vibration with. Is that correct? And if so, how do you see that, interpret that, know that, or even understand how to language it in a way that it becomes an energy we receive? Yeah, so that's a pretty accurate description. So, um, and I'm sure a lot of your audience knows this. I'm just going to explain it in a way that, that from our perspective, whatever you want to call that. What do you mean by our? Is it you and you and somebody else or just you? I've always been part of a team since I was a kid. Um, I've always used the term we instead of I. And when I was a kid, I just said it's because of Winnie the Pooh. And I really liked the talking about we. But the truth is, I have always been very aware that I am surrounded by a number of amazing uh, beings that support me and I never feel that my decisions are, are are David's decisions I feel that it's a group effort from the word go um, so I always say we or our okay thank you um, so I've uh, a lot of okay so Whatever it is that is a homogenized, non-expressed field, physics calls it the unified field, Veda calls it Atman or unbounded awareness or pure awareness or consciousness or whatever they call it, whatever we call it, source, although I don't like source because you can go to, you can find pictures online of the source of the Ganges or the source of the Nile, but that's not the source. That's just the first place you see it. Mm -hmm. The source is somewhere hidden behind that. And so um, I, I like to think of it as terms of source of source, but it's a field that has all possible, it has the potential for anything within it, but it doesn't have anything expressed within it. And the mm. way that we describe... The so you mean the place of no thing where exactly. everything can come? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So in quantum physics, there's a process whereby um, in, the, in the quantum field, for no reason whatsoever, something can pop into existence, move backwards in times, and then split apart and go in two different directions. And... So this, I, and the quantum field is a more expressed field. It's, it's a lively field of energy, but it's already more expressed than the silent field. And the way that uh, we were sitting at the dining room table one night with a couple of friends and, and what came, um, I was doing work with Divine Mother, who I work with pretty much uh, exclusively um, with others, but... Um, what came out was that how creation comes and this field hears a rumor that it has all possibilities within it and it says cool let me see what that looks like mm -hmm. and so within itself moving within itself it somehow creates vibrations patterns whatever that move into from that level to the quantum field and then into more expressed levels into the vast variety that we see. And to put that in perspective of how that nothing outside of it is coming and shaking it. Nothing outside is doing anything. So from a field where no color exists, no sound exists, no taste exists, no thought exists, all of that. So from that, we have the trillions of colors that my computer screen can display, which is only a fraction of what we can actually see. 
that we hear the sounds, that we can hear the smells, the clouds, the birds, the trees, the stars, the heavens, every experience that we've ever had, and the ability to have that experience and the, and the magnificent glory of the human nervous system all comes out of literally no thing, of literally nothing, moving within itself somehow to churn this incredible creation. So what you find is that if this is the process and it, and it happens sequentially rather than randomly, although randomness does occur as well, then what happens is if you can go, if you can transcend, if you can go to those levels within those fields and see the seed from whence any particular thing is coming from, you can enhance that, magnify it, draw it out. So we use the example of, of color and light. And people know that white is all colors and black is no colors. So if you want to make something purple, if you can go into the white, and within the white, you can isolate purple, and then you just kind of quietly nudge it up, nudge it up, nudge it up until it's expressed. And then you go over here and you get some blue for the sky and gold for the yellow sun and green for the earth and flesh tones and red for your lipstick or whatever. And you just start pulling from that level. And that's what we do. And that's where everything comes from. We specifically would sit around and say, what problems, what, what are the problems on the world that need to be fixed? And then we would find this, then we would go in and find the solution, bring it out and make a graphic or a card that goes in your wallet or whatever, so that people can take advantage of it. Okay, unbelievable. That was a really good description because that's not easy to explain. I discovered, David, that you got your bachelor's degree from the Maharishi University of Management in Fairfield, Iowa. Had no idea in the study of unified field. And then you got your master's degree from the Maharishi University of Management, unified field of consciousness. And subsequently, you served four years on their faculty. Yeah, I actually almost got a another master's degree, but I didn't bother to write the final paper, so I, I don't get credit for it. And here you are anyway. What was it like? I mean, Fairfield, Iowa, for those who don't know, I mean, this is a pretty famous place, and some pretty substantial people have lived there over the years, but, you know, it's, I mean, I would call it a commune of sorts, but to be very clear, it is a beautiful place of peace and meditation where they med meditate twice a day. And um, there's lots I could say. What was it like for you to be there, to live there during that time? Uh, okay, so I need to start with this. Um, when I first started meditating, I got very excited about it and I heard a rumor that they were starting a university, which at the time was in Santa Barbara. They rented some um, apartment complex or something. So in 1973, I got to go to Santa Barbara from Western Massachusetts, where I grew up. And um, we were six blocks from the beach, Santa Barbara, beautiful California, loved it there. I was there for, um, I want to say a year and a half or so. I went to France during that time and got, became a teacher of Medita of TM at, at the time. Uh, went back and then they were able to, the university found that they could buy this campus, the former Parsons College in Fairfield, Iowa. So we all moved there. I spent a, a couple of years, a year, a year and a half there, then left, did a whole bunch of stuff, then moved back in the early 80s and stayed there for almost 19 years. Um, and because we wanted to be part of that community, the, the research behind it had been that um, in 1974, they discovered that when a, a, a fraction of a, I'm sorry, a small percentage of people in a given uh, population, given city, learned to meditate that the crime rate went down, which was very exciting because Marishi had always been saying, if we get the individual to be at peace, then um, it should help society. So this was very exciting um, in the, mid to late 80s, Maharishi developed an advanced program for, for people called the TM City program, which we learned, which included yogic flying. And that was a cool breakthrough for individual growth. But then they found that when people practiced in groups, 
that it had a much more significantly dramatic effect on society and what they found out based on a formula from physics for superconductors and superfluidity is that if they could get the square root of 1% of the population to be doing this program together twice a day for, you know, would be about an hour or so, um, that it would affect all these things in society, crime rate and health and politics and all of this stuff. So in 1979, um, Marishi asked a bunch of us to go to everybody to go to Fairfield who could so that we would have 1600 people doing this group meditation twice a day every day, which was the square root at the time of the United States population. I think now the square root is about 1800 and um, Really good things happening when we look at, at there was a um, it's it turns out that even though we had about 2,000 to 2,500 meditators in the town of about 10,000, everybody had kids, the weather, all kinds of things. It was very hard to keep the numbers in the dome up. But there was a time for, I think, about three years, I want to say, where these very kind people donated a, um, a million dollars a month, and we got some people from some pundits from India to come to make sure that we had the right number. And during that time, there was a, a daily tracking on the web. You could find out how many people were in the dome and you could see what was going on in the news. And really good things were happening in the country at that time. Mm. In the, uh, I think it was 80, um, 83 to 84, they, uh, we got a group of 7,000 for three weeks, which is what you needed for the world. And staggering things happened. One of the things that happened was it um, before that happened, when a plane crashed, everybody died. That was just given knowledge. And during this course in Thailand, the other side of the world, a plane crashed with 186 people. No one died. Only one person got reasonably severely in, in, I, I think one person got fairly injured, but still walkawayable, and another person like banged his elbow. And other than that, everybody was fabulous. And from that point on, it, it, people never assumed that if you were in a plane crash, you were going to die. It was, how do, we, how do we survive? How do we, there's things that we can do. There was a forest fire in the state of Washington when it began that they were, pre, that was so huge, they predicted it was going to be months before they could put it out. And every day at the, uh, uh, during these meetings that we were having, they would read the news of what's going on. And by day three, it had started raining. And by day five, they were very excited. And by day seven, it was over. It was completely gone. So this whole thing was happening. So we lived there. We went, they, and it was, it was Iowa. So coming from California, where I was in Laguna Beach, a block from the ocean at the time. There was that. It wasn't as beautiful as many places that I loved, but the consciousness is really amazing. And they have always and still encouraged people just go there because the atmosphere is incredibly huge. Um, yeah. So I, I kind of want to bring this up if I can, and that is that um, the inability to consistently have the right numbers there was one of the reasons that we developed the precursor of the Peace and Harmony program, which was to help generate harmony um, at the best level that it could for wide expanses of people. It was called the Smooth Transition System. Now it's uh, these peacemaker systems that we have. And the first one we put up, we put up in Austin, Texas. And the weekend after it went up, they had the largest forest fire they ever had in the history of Texas. And it was right outside of Austin. And the people who had the system up said they never even smelled smoke. Everything was completely fine where they were. And she just said, I can't help but wonder what it would have been like if we didn't have the system. Because, you know, thousands of houses had burned and everything. Mm. Um, we had similar experiences in Oklahoma with tornadoes and Florida and hurricanes and in um, North Carolina with crime rate going down. And so then what is possible right now with COVID? Like, so people who are listening to this, 
whether we're in the virus, coming out of the pandemic, you know, there's some talk that maybe, you know, it could have a resurgence because people are going to just get back out there. With all of this, what do you have that people might want to start using that could make a big change? You had made a reference earlier saying this is the time for heaven on earth. This is the time for the golden life. You even said, if we're here, we ask to be here during a really auspicious time. So talk about that a little bit. What, what do you have that's available that could really solidify this into being a beautiful golden, golden age of, feels to me like mass manifestation in a great way, but I'd like to make the leap. Yeah. So thank you for asking. Um, the best thing is going to be to get a um, peace and harmony system. We have the free sample, which is the one you're playing. And we have some programs for hospitals and stuff that uh, hospitals and prisons and um, essential businesses that will give them for free. They can use their own PA system that will let them use for free during the sit time, which will help eliminate people from I'm just going to, you know, the anger and hostility or whatever, upset, unstressing, whatever you want to call it. Um, there's no need for that. Um, and this can help reduce that. And people can get systems for their own house. Um, we have a system that people use to, so the people upstairs stop stomping around in the apartment upstairs, you know. And then we have the bigger systems and the bigger systems. And my recommendation is get whatever you can afford because we can actually create a system for an entire country. Um, so, you know, it's, it's as big as you want, whatever people want, and they start at, you know, very reasonable fees, and then it's just however big you want to go. Um, and these are physical systems, not just the, the free download sample that we have. Um, and you've seen one of them, uh, which is a slightly different one. So, um, so that, but the other thing I think to do is to recognize that almost nobody, I, I don't want to say almost nobody, <clears throat> because I'm sure that there's a lot of people who are listening in your tribe, and I know that you get this. Um, the COVID is basically Mother Earth giving the human race a timeout and saying, go to your room and think about what you've done. <laughs> that's right. Good. Well said. <laughs> and that's it. And when you get sent to your room, Maybe monks like it, but the rest of us don't. So we want to, you and I have talked about how, you know, you want to be chomping at the bit to get out and visit friends and everything. And I totally get that. Um, so, but it's not a time that, that the vast majority of humanity is going to be excited about it. And yes, kids, when they're sent to their room, whine and can I come out and they'll sneak out and I'm just going to the bathroom when they're, you know, or just let me get a book out of the, you know, TV room or whatever. There's, the, you know, they try to get, and we see that happening. People showing up with guns and saying, we want the right to come out. And, and it's just, you know, craziness. But, it yeah, is yeah. totally. No, I, I concur with you 100%. That has been my download since the moment this happened. I got it. I'm like, come on. If we say we are creators, right? Anybody out there who says, oh, I create everything. The world is my movie projection, right? If I want to change the projection, whatever. But if you shut down the entire planet individually and collectively and locked yourself inside, as far as I'm concerned, two things are happening concurrently. I mean, I think there's an enormous um, up-leveling going on spiritually and brand new possibilities that you can explode into should you choose. And second of all, you know, you need, you do need to pay attention. I agree a thousand percent. Mother Earth has been, Gaia has been so kind and passive looking ish um, up until now. And I think it's like, no, you know, I I'm the queen. <laughs> this is my domain you're living in. And we need to take care of each other and her and all of it ourselves. It's a big reckoning, but I think it's a very positive reckoning. And everybody I know has been saying, I haven't had time to spend with my family. And now I do. I have the universe has been begging me to be alone and now I am and face whatever your X factor is you haven't been willing to face. I think it's an incredibly profound time and not to be taken lightly or get caught up in the quote unquote boredom or, you know, how am I going to, you know, all of that make a living Then maybe that's been begging to be healed or maybe what you're doing isn't what you're supposed to be doing or maybe it's time to collaborate or there's so many ways to be using this time worry 
and anger and, and all of it, let the uncertainty rock your world to bring up what needs to be healed. And I promise you, if you'll step into the discomfort, so much is possible. God knows I have been, you know, I really have been. And so we're going to take a quick break. This is such delicious conversation. And when we come back, we'll be talking with David about his Invincible Stars and Brahmin Consciousness program and a couple other things. Also, a very interesting way he got his start. And so what I've been saying to you is stand for your greatness, right? So many people, they've got these creative juices right now, and it's such a beautiful, important time. I established a platform to help people to write their book. I know so many people like, book has been on my bucket list. I've never done it. I've always had an excuse or I just didn't know how. Come with me. I'm showing people live coaching. We've started, but you can jump into the membership at any time because it's ongoing. It's at debbie-dashinger.com slash visible visionaries. You're listening. You're part of my tribe. That's who's already in the membership. It's delicious, people. Really great. And what a beautiful time to harness the power inside of you. You came here with a message. You came here with a story to tell. Whatever that is, I will show you how to get it out from idea of book to published. And you can do it this year. Go to Debbie, D-E-B-B-I, D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash visible visionaries and join us there. And you will get $4,000 worth of free gifts. It's true. You'll get a ton of stuff just for joining up that will help you immediately start to write your book. So we're back now with the founder of peaceandharmonyco.com, David Adelson. And David, Invincible Stars and Brahmin Consciousness Program. I just loved the name. I was like, I don't know what that is, but I want to know what that is. So it's said that this is a guaranteed program to deliver personal development, manifestation, and enlightenment to the planet. Can you say more? Nah. <laughs> yeah. oh, good. Um, what to say? Um, you know, we talk about doing less and accomplishing more. And I know that a lot of people who are listening in your tribe feel that they're here to do something, feel that they have a purpose. And I've worked with enough people, and I suspect you have as well, that some of the people, their purpose is to just enjoy their life. Their, their purpose is to simply let their light shine. They're not here to... So when we talk, for instance, about you know where my programs come from, and they come from this very deep, profound level, but what they all include is is what we call wholeness it's that it's that underlying unification of everything so that whatever so that if you're using one of my health programs it's not only helping your health but it's also helping you come into sync with the totality of all that is so that you're in flow with natural law and everything works out better for you and yours okay so some people simply embody that and and it doesn't matter what they do. They could be working in a bank, they could be a cobbler, they could be buying groceries, and their job is to let that light shine. And for, I, I want to say about four years ago, maybe four or five years ago, I was told that I was, that a whole number of what we'll call light workers, um, but these people who are here to do good, a whole bunch of them had lost their way. And what that means is that a lot of us who came from other places mm. were floored when we got here, that we had no idea it was going to be like this. We withdrew within. We got sidetracked as we grew up by commercials on TV. We started, really, we started thinking that we're here to make money, and that's not what we're here to do at all. And so I was told to, um, that we needed to start finding the lost light workers and remind them of who they were and what they're here to do, which is shine. That's what a light worker does is you shine your light. And some of us take roles as healers or developers or speakers or givers of wisdom. And some of us really just need to embody that totality within us as if we're literally a light 
a bright light walking around. And so the, pro the Invincible Stars program was to take whatever level of brightness that you had, which in many cases in a lot of people was, you know, a 60 watt bulb or an 80 watt bulb, mm. which sounds like not very much, but when you compare it to the vast majority of the human race who are running at, you know, one candle watt at, at best, and they spend half of their time snuffing that out by paying attention to the beer and drug commercials all the time. Um, so you get somebody like that. And then the program was to make their light so bright that they would influence people miles away, even if they were just checking their mail. Sort you know, of like the butterfly effect. A butterfly can flap its wings in one country and half the world later, there could be some kind of storm that's created by what yeah. transpired. Yes, but mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a great analogy of action at a distance, except that in this case, what we're doing by shining our light is enlivening those subtle levels that cause people to act more in accordance with natural law. So we talked earlier about the, the research that had been done when a, a large group of people were meditating, crime rate went down, or these other things happened. But if you look at the cities where crime rate went down, or traffic accidents went down, or um, during the uh, conflict in Israel uh, several years ago, they used to be able to, to count, they used to be able to predict the war deaths by how many people were doing the group program in Israel. They would know how many people would die because if they had a high number, it would be low. And if they had a low number doing the group coherence programs, it would, it would you know, the, it conversely affect it. So what happens is these people are not going around and telling the criminals, by the way, we're all meditating, so you should stop being a criminal. It's they're working from a very deep, profound level that allows the people to just the fog in their mind to clear, for instance, the stresses in their body to dissipate. So, uh, and this is where all our programs work from. So it isn't that you, if you're trying to make a change and you know, oh, I've got to exercise, I've got to exercise, that's a really hard one. But if you're in line with who you are and if you're in line with health, it's the easiest thing in the world. There's no inner yeah. resistance. <clears throat> Absolutely, so, yeah. You're so, talking about a resonance. So if something is vibrating here, there is a choice synergistically to also vibrate. Things don't usually stay here. If they do, that's pretty powerful to even make that choice, but often they will come here, right? And what we're saying is just what you're saying is keeping it low. This is shining, this is enlivening the level of, uh, whether you wanna call it transcendence or quantum field, but it's this is people who are, are radiating this light are doing so unconsciously it doesn't matter whether they're taking a shower or yelling at their spouse. They're still radiating this light, but it's enlivening at a very deep level the fundamentals that allow us to actually act in accord with natural law, which we are part of. So okay. the Invincible Stars program was to help people, uh, you know, really uh, break through on that. Um, it's a premium program that, that uh, for a year, um, and it was a group program. Um, it was $100,000 for the year. And then the Brahmin Consciousness Program is for people who have been um, meditating for 30 years or more who understand what Brahmin Consciousness is. Okay. Do you want me to go there? Well, I want to ask you, because I want to follow this. Can you say it quickly? So that I want to make sure everybody gets that Brahmin Consciousness. But I have another question based on what you were just saying that is of interest to me. So Brahman, so here's the thing. We all experience different states of consciousness every day. We wake up, which is waking state of consciousness. We go to sleep, which is a completely different state of consciousness. And our experiences are completely different because in sleep, there's nothing. And then there's dreams, which is not waking and not sleeping and has particular qualities to it. And all the laws of nature are different there. Mm. So what happens is these are only three of, Maharishi called it, outlined seven states of consciousness, different teachers have different ways of delineating them. But each of these states of consciousness have a completely different reality slash experience and a completely different physiology. 
So when we meditate and we transcend, that's a fourth state of consciousness because we're unlike sleep, we're completely awake within ourselves, but we're, there's no object of attention. So Brahman consciousness is that state where one is aware. We talked about that unit, the source of source or the unified field of pure awareness. Brahman consciousness is that state where one owns that that is what slash who I am. And also that is what slash everything else is. And that is what slash the link between us is that I am totality and all of this manifest creation, including the farthest star at the farthest and the farthest galaxy is part of me. And it's a life of continual flow and unprecedented bliss. But I want to give you an idea when we talk about the difference between if you were to go to a person in sleep state of consciousness who had never experienced anything other than sleep state of consciousness, and you tried to describe your waking state to them, and you tried to describe forms and colors and oceans and sky and sun and moon and body and eyes and ears, they're they have nothing to relate it to. They have no concept of what you're talking about. The difference between waking state and Brahman is like 15 times that. Mm. So it's a completely different way of functioning where every thought and action is completely in flow with everything in manifest creation, where your desires, first of all, don't need to be because you're already fulfilled but your desires happen very spontaneously and effortlessly. And we've all had those moments where things worked out spontaneously, but this is like on a cosmic global scale. So <laughs> It's like what, Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. You wake up and it's like, oh, I can have everything I want. I'm and <laughs> you, not only do you have it, but you are it. You so. are it. You are the chocolate. <laughs> I'm not even into chocolate. It's a funny analogy for me to use. Yeah, I always use ice cream, but I, I know what you're saying. So. I'm with you there. Um, you know, first of all, I love what you said, David, about, oh gosh, this is so prevalent for me right now. So of course it's perfect you'd bring this up. This whole idea of being coming from another place, another planet, another dimension, being an extra dimensional ET, whatever hybrid. And it's so interesting because, you know, over the years I've had Whitley Strieber on the show and Robert Perel and Bashar, and, and I love the conversation, my God. And at the same time, I've always been a, eh, you know, not really my thing. Something has changed, really changed for me recently, and I'm hungry and watching and listening. And I have this woman coming on the show who's very well known from Amsterdam, who channels um, an energy called Ar Arjun from Yaye. And Bashar is coming back on. And this is like, yeah, this is what I'm ready to talk about. So I love that you address that, and that, feel, that difference, that feeling and getting off track and being derailed, but coming back and, you know, like indigenously who we really are is the light worker. So one of the things that you talk about is that the things we've done have gotten us thus far. What we know has gotten us thus far in order to, but in order to get where we really want to go, what we need to do is release the old. And so I want to know from you, what are the new rules? What are the new rules that will get us where we really want to go next in business and in our personal lives? So good. So thank you for asking. So the basic thing to understand is that we're going from a time in the world that if we go from the Vedic Eastern, um, from India, the way that they categorize time, we're going from Kali Yuga, which is the shortest and the worst time where life is 25% in accord with natural law. So we have a lot of suffering. We're going from, so there's four yugas, epochs, whatever you want to call them, ages, according to, to the Hindu scriptures, uh, the Vedic science. And the first is Sat Yuga, which is the longest, and you're 100% in tune with natural law, there is effectively no suffering. Human life is a thousand years and we're useful for the whole time. Um, 
it, it's, you know, be, there's no sickness, there's no thievery because there's no need to, everybody has everything, okay? And then there's another age um, that's three quarters, another age that's half, and then the Kali Yuga. And they go for, through sequence. Um, so what happens is that we are now in the Kali Yuga stage, but when it goes in sequence, it doesn't go from Sat Yuga to, it doesn't go from 100 to 75 to 50 to 25 to 50 to 70. It goes from 100 to 75 to 50% natural law to 25% natural law to 100. It jumps all the way back. So this is a huge quantum, it's a huge, very dramatic shift that we're going through and we're going through it very quickly. And we're going through it massively quickly. Um, basically, God, there's so much I want to say here. Okay, one, we're moving from a Newtonian-based physics reality, which says you push something and it go, it, it, an object in motion stays in motion unless acted upon by an outside force. Everything is relative. Everything is causal. And we're going from that to a quantum unified field-based reality, which we've already talked about, that for no reason something can come into existence move backwards in time and um, go into two different directions. That if you tickle unboundedness way over here on the right, it lasts on the other side of Saturn. You know, it's things can, there's no causal relationship that the human mind can wrap itself around. So the rules are different. And we made a video that I'd love to share with your audience. Um, I will put it on, um, I'll put it on the home page of peaceandharmonyco.com so they can just find it there. And it outlines the new rules. Um, and we're actually going to be launching on Monday a, a 12 lesson course on how to apply them. But the five rules of the new age are, I'm going to see if I can remember them in sequence. One, I want what I want and I get it. Two, I do not try to figure it out because if I do, I will slow down the process. <laughs> Three, I, you never think of anything that you don't want. You have to avoid saying, thinking anything that isn't what you want to experience. Four is that, and this will, this will be listed somewhere. And four is that whenever you have to struggle, you come back to wholeness, come back to source, come back to connectedness. And five is we must take very seriously, never taking ourselves too seriously. Mm. And, the, and, that, and, and there's a reason for all of them. And there's, there's more information on all of them. And people started asking questions. And that's why we're doing this um, group program. And it's, uh, I, I haven't done anything less than these really expensive programs for several years. Um, the Brahman consciousness program is 250,000 and the next people will have to pay 300,000. So these are, this is normally what I do, except that the need for this was so great that it's going to be $199 for this 12 week program, one hour a week. And um, we're going to go through things like I want what if, if I want what I want and I get it, and this other person wants what they want and they get it, but it's completely the opposite of what I want. How does that work out? Yeah. But, it does work out and there's things that you need to know about it such as is is what you want what you want or is what you want what you saw in a ford commercial so for just for an example so i'm in love with you i want you to love me too somebody else says yeah i love you but like a friend like i don't feel that exactly so you're saying where where does that come out in the wash and where did the download come from for the want for each and right. then what ensues in between. Right. And so during, exactly right. So what's going to happen is that not only will we give in intellectual information, but we're going to start going in and clearing so that you can find, when we talk about I want what I want and I get it, it's what your soul wants. It's what you're really here to experience. Mm -hmm. And we've all been distracted because look at the advertising budget wow. and the money spent wow. on this planet. And in movies and product placement and everything, you are being bombarded with information and sold a bill of goods which says you will be fulfilled by X, Y, Z. So we need to clear all that. And this virus is, is happening. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the, the amount of dramatic change that's happening. 
And we just have a few minutes, so yes. Uh, okay, so I'm going to end with this, or whatever, we'll go. Okay, normally when a planet reaches the stage that we've reached and humanity has destroyed this planet, okay, make no mistake, it is not in good shape. Right. And normally what happens when we go to make the level of shift that we're going to, basically everybody gets wiped out. And the original plan for Earth was in the late 90s, early 2000s, Mo basically all but 600,000 people were going to be exhumed from the earth. So this was supposed to happen mm, almost 20 years ago. So is this like AKA a replica of Lemuria that was supposed, supposed to rehappen, or this is a whole different something, something that was supposed to go down 20 years ago? Don't know what Lemuria is, what that is. Oh, so. okay. Ancient civilization on Earth that basically destroyed itself. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So similar. So the same thing it, it happens on all the different planets that when people blow it to, when it gets too far out, they, the planet does a reset. The planet doesn't need us. We need the planet. So they do a reset, just like we would if we get caught with a flu or whatever. We go get a shot. We take echinacea. We do whatever we do, and we just purge that population of whatever it is. So that was supposed to happen, except that a whole bunch of beings, probably every single one of the people listening to this podcast, said, you know what, what happens if we keep everybody, if we keep the vast majority of the population alive and we move them all in transition into a heaven on earth, into a golden age, into whatever you want to call it. There is a story in... Uh, the Srimad Devi Bhagavantam, which is a book, uh, one of the Puranas, one of the 18 Puranas in the Vedic literature, um, which talks about there's a king who's got a lovely kingdom. Everything is going good. And he talks to the sage that he has. And he says, I'd like to, everything's good. Everybody's happy in the kingdom. No problems. Um, but when I die, I'd like to, instead of dying, I'd like to just descend to heaven. And he's told he can't do that. Then a whole, and I, we don't have time, so I'm not going to go into the whole coolness of the story, but one thing after another after another, and they're horrible, they're absolutely horrible things that happen to him um, um, within starting about a week later. And it takes him years to get out of it. And at the end of the years to get out of it, and his son has died, and he sold his wife and his son into slavery to get money to pay for this thing. He lost all his money, lost the kingdom. All of this happened. But at the end of it, he finally pays back this one um, for spiritual program that he, that he had done. He finally pays that sage back. And as soon as he pays that sage back, he said, okay, you can have your kingdom back. And here's your wife. And by the way, your son's fine. And here's what's going on with him. And, and now you can ascend to heaven without dying. And this is, this is the very cool part because the king then says, well, Anything that a king accomplishes, he accomplishes by the grace of all of his, pop, all of his um, subjects. So I would like them all to ascend to heaven without dying. And they said, so be it. Tell everybody to get ready. And so this whole, this whole culture just rose to heaven without having to go through that horrible suffering. So I really want to, you know, what's going on in the world, you and I both agree, it's a huge plus. It's not a negative. It's to let go of fear. It's to help people reorient what their true purpose is, to get them out of the loop long enough to think about what they've done and to think about who they want to be and what life they'd want to live at. And the big question that comes up is, for those who know the Old Testament, Moses goes to Egypt to free the Israelites. And first he asks and he's told no. And then there's one plague and then another. And he goes through 10 plagues. And then finally, at this very dramatic one, the Pharaoh says, okay, everybody can go. And then even then he chases after them, but all of those people get wiped out. So the question we have before us, Debbie, is, is this the pandemic or is this the first pandemic? Touche. That's, that's up to us. It's up know? to us. I concur so much the choices you make right now that's why i say stand for your greatness you know this it is meaningful what's happening and the choices you make 
and who you know yourself to be. Yeah, it's really time to step into your potency. So gosh, thank you so much. I got to ask you, because it's part of the show right here very quickly at the end, David. What do you next dare to dream? This is Dare to Dream. What are your future dreams and goals? Oh, my current goal is to have thousands of these peace systems all over the world because that will really help. Um, it will calm people down. And when we're calm, we can see clearly, we can think clearly. And we're looking for, you know, a few thousand people, actually 4,200 people who want to get the bigger systems more than the free sample download, who will buy them and take responsibility for their neighbor, their apartment building, their neighborhood, their mm -hmm. community, their town, their state, wow. whatever they want to do, um, come and put up a system and it'll just blast and, you know, Think of, think of uh, these pockets of peace. You know, 4,200 of them would be huge for the world. And we should round it up to 5,000. But that's what, that's what my big goal is. And I'd love to do it this year. Okay. So, so that's peaceandharmonyco.com. And if you would like to experience the free download, it is peaceandharmony.co.com. No. Do it for us, please. <laughs> <laughs> the free sample is at peaceandharmonydownload.com. And it's a video. You just click and play it and let it loop in the background. And don't try it thinking that you have to set some time aside and experience it for 10 or 15 minutes. Turn it on. Let it play. Go do what you want. Let it play for three or four days. And if you're not sure it's doing anything, turn it off and you will know. Oh, yeah. But no doubt for real people. David, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your brilliance. I've really enjoyed this. Thank you so much for having me. I, I love talking to you as we've talked about before. We could go on for days and I always love the opportunity to spend time with you. So thank you so much. And thank you for letting me share all this with your tribe. And let's tell people, because I was just recently on your show, let's tell people where your podcast is so they can go listen to us, you interviewing me. Oh, here we come to save the day. And we address different problems that people have and it's meant to be fun and enjoyable. And, uh, and I love it because I'm learning a lot about it. I've learned that 90% of uh, our vision is in the mind and not physically in the eyes. And there's things you can do to fix your eyes, um, how to get rid of writer's block, what we, you and I talked about, which is the big getting rid of the big question that's that's in everybody's mind, the big question mark over our head. Um, they're they're yeah. fun and they're, and we loved having you. And thank you. Thank you. It, indeed. Check it out. And what was interesting, just as an aside here, at the end of the show, David was excited to show me this big system you're talking, he's talking about with a television set and everything. He turned everything around so I could watch it. And we were in the middle of, you know, offline, not being recorded conversation. And at some point I went completely catatonic. And he was trying to talk to me. I, I was done. I, this, whatever was being emitted from this system he has, I was done. I need an affiliate link. That's all I can say because he literally had to direct me and say, Debbie, let's end our time together just for now. I want you to go lay down. God, was he right. I went and passed out on the sofa. His stuff is powerful. So I'm going to really recommend you go check it out. Thank you, everybody for coming and listening to Dare to Dream. If you love what you hear on the podcast, go see us. Go see what we look like animated live. Uh, we are at youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger and leave us a, a little review there and subscribe. And I'm gonna end the show today with this quote from Marianne Williamson, which is, old Newtonian physics claimed that things have an objective reality separate from our perception of them quantum physics and particularly Heisenberg's uncertainty principle reveal that as our, as our perception of an object changes, the object itself literally changes. Join us again in this number one transformation conversation. Coming up is James Redfield. James has previously been on the show and he came back to Dare to Dream and said he wants to do a four-part wisdom and guidance series for all of you at this auspicious time. So we're going to be starting that very soon. Thank you for joining Dare to Dream. If you would like to write your book, go to debbie-shinger.com slash visible visionaries and stand for your greatness get your book 
your message, your vision out into the world.